So at first, my plan was just to do a light, fluffy, you know, can you believe it's already been 500 episodes kind of diatribe. But the more I wrote, the more I realized that you can't really talk about that without acknowledging how much worse the country that I'm diatribing into now is than the one that I was diatribing into back at the start. I mean, keep in mind, it was 2013, right? With This show started right when Obama was being inaugurated into his second term. And, and, and as shitty as John McCain and Mitt Romney were, they're pretty damn moderate when you compare them with today's GOP leaders. The, the atheist community was thriving at that time. We weren't even a year removed from the first Reason rally, which drew such an unexpectedly huge crowd. It was being called the atheist Woodstock. Secularism seemed bulletproof in the courts. Hell, one of my first interviews was on the subject of how much longer the country would even need atheist-specific media. Nearly a decade on, that shit seems like a half-remembered dream. I, I mean, Biden probably isn't any less progressive than Obama, but his opponent in the last election was a Christo-fascist, right? And whoever the fucking Republican nominee is in 2024 will probably be running on Christian grievance and theocratic promises. Atheism continues to grow as a demographic, but shrink as a movement. Every week, I see more people proudly proclaiming their exodus from the atheist community as though abandoning it to the shitlords is somehow a virtue. And plenty of the major draws at the original Reason Rally turned out to be embarrassments in retrospect and gave those folks plenty of solid reasons to leave. The, the Supreme Court is fast approaching fucking Spanish Inquisition levels of Christian control, and the need for people speaking on behalf of rationalism hasn't been higher in living memory. Honestly, the landscape has gotten so much more dire while we've been doing the show that I have to at least consider the possibility that the show is the fucking problem. Right? And, and in a sense, it is. Right? I, I mean, it's, it's far too grandiose to pretend that our podcast moved the national needle in any meaningful way. But the Christian backlash that you're seeing now was no doubt inspired by the visibility and successes of the atheist movement a decade ago. We were still a small minority, mind you, but nobody overestimates the size of an opposing minority with quite the gusto of American Christians. They consistently and comically overestimate what percentage of the population is Muslim, gay, atheist, whatever. I mean, you know, they're raised with a thought of a disappointed God watching a masturbate and demons hiding around every corner. So I guess seeing enemies where there aren't any is just second nature to them. But to some degree, it was real. And when they put their Christian platitudes online, atheists pointed out how illogical they were. When they put their prayers in front of secular gatherings, atheists complained. When they demanded the same amount of Christian privilege that they had just taken for granted for generations, atheists said no. And that scared the shit out of them. A lot of the problems that we're seeing now in our culture stem from their panicked response to exactly that fear. Now, at the same time, you know, the growth of our community has caused it to fracture here and there along the way. I mean, several of the problematic headliners at Reason Rally and the like didn't become problematic after the fact. OK, I mean, some of them did, of course, but some of them were just always that bad. And it took a critical mass of people in the community willing to expose that fact for there to be any real movement about it. So as much as it may seem like the community took a turn for the worse, it's more accurate to say that it took a turn for the better that threw how bad it already was into stark relief. And sure, many of those problematic speakers are still around and still drawing big crowds, but they're not getting invited to shit like the Reason Rally. They're only speaking on behalf of atheism to the extent that we allow our opponents to choose our spokespeople. But regardless of how we got here, whether as victims of our own success or just by stumbling into the inevitable trough that comes after the peak, here is where we are. And here is a damn scary place to be. Here where public school teachers can coerce their students into prayer, where corporations have religious beliefs, where taxpayers can be forced to fund private religious schools, where explicitly religious slogans adorn our public property, where teaching on honest account of the historical privilege in this country is against the law, where the right to reproductive care is contingent on biblical interpretation. That's where we are. All of those things happened after we posted episode one of this show. Hell, all of those things would have been unthinkable when we posted episode one of this show. You know, if I had opened my first diatribe warning of those possibilities, I'd have been dismissed as an alarmist. And yet here we are. And who the hell knows where we're going? Right? I mean, the demographic trends haven't changed. The rate at which America is secularizing has, if anything, increased. 
And Pew just released a study that said Christianity is likely to lose its majority status in this country in the next 50 years. But at the same time, and as a direct consequence, Christian leaders are seizing power at an unprecedented rate, desperately trying to lock in their dominance quick while they still have the numbers to do it. And even as their control increases, they scream ever louder about how besieged they are. Their gain in power seems to correlate about one to one with their perceived loss of power. And that means that their solutions are getting ever more terrifying just at the same time that they're better able to implement those solutions. In other words, we've got our work cut out for us for the next 500 episodes. I mean, look, the world doesn't need the Scathing Atheist podcast. I won't flatter myself with any delusions of grandeur here, but the world absolutely needs scathing atheists. This podcast could disappear tomorrow without making any difference in the overall political trends and forces in the larger culture, but the same can't be said for this community. Whatever impact this show has on the world doesn't come from my end of the speaker. You know, it's not what's in the headphones, it's what's in between them. So thanks for being in between them. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for lending us your time and your ears and in a lot of cases, your effort and your money to this cause and to this community. And thanks for letting me devote so much of my life to it. I'd be yelling into an empty room about this shit with or without you, but my family worries way less about me this way. <laughs>